This is one of multiple Gen3 Lab videos. I've been asked numerous times to create a series of videos showing you how to configure and set up various Gen3 topologies. As part of this lab series, I'm going to make the Gen3 topologies available. Look at the link below this video to get the initial topology. And then we're going to complete a number of tasks. So either try and complete the tasks yourself or follow along as I complete the tasks in these videos. This topology consists of four iOS Dynamips routers. The iOS that I'm using is a 3725 Advanced Enterprise image. I'm not using viral images in this topology because viral images don't support serial interfaces. In this topology, router one is connected to router two on serial two slash zero. And we're gonna configure this serial interface to use PPP encapsulation. The serial interface between router one and router three will use PPP, but in addition, will use PAP authentication or password authentication protocol. The link between router one and router four will use PPP CHAP or challenge handshake authentication protocol. So in this topology, you'll need to configure three variations of the PPP encapsulation. So again, we're going to enable PPP between router one and router two, Enable two-way PPP PAP authentication between router one and router three. Router one will use a password of Cisco one and router three a password of Cisco three. We're gonna use debugs and show commands to prove that PPP PAP has successfully negotiated. Then we're gonna enable PPP CHAP authentication and also use debugs and show commands to verify successful negotiation. Then we're gonna use Wireshark to view the negotiation and answer some questions. We're lastly going to enable EIGRP in Autonomous System 100 and prove that all devices can ping each other. I've also added some additional resources below which you can use to learn more about PPP CHAP and PPP PAP authentication. So let's get started. The routers in the topology have just booted up. Show IP interface brief on router one shows us that various IP addresses are configured on the serial interfaces and a loopback is configured on router one. On router two, we see something similar, serial interfaces configured and loopback addresses configured. So at the moment, router one should be able to ping router two and that's because the serial interface is using the default encapsulation of HDLC. So on both router one and router two, HDLC encapsulation is being used. So what we'll do to complete the first task is change the encapsulation to PPP. And we need to do that on both sides. Notice the interface goes down if one side is configured with PPP and the other side is configured with HTLC. Encapsulations have to match on both sides. So on router one, we can see that the interface came up and we should be able to ping router two, which we can. So to prove the point, debug IP ICMP, router one is able to ping router two and we can see the output on router two's console. So we've successfully configured router one and router two with PPP. So that was fairly simple. Now let's configure PPP PAP between router one and router three. We told that we need to enable two-way PPP PAP authentication between the routers Router one will use a password of Cisco one. Router three will use a password of Cisco three. So different passwords will be used on the two routers. So on router one, username, router three, password, Cisco three. Router one needs to have a local username and password database or use a Radius or TACAX server for the authentication. In this example, we don't have a TACAX or Radius server. 
So we're going to use a local username and password database for the authentication. So on the interface, two slash one at the moment, the encapsulation used is the default of HDLC. We need to change that to PPP. So encapsulation PPP. We are going to enable PPP options here and specifically authentication. So PPP authentication, we have a few options. In this example, we're gonna use password authentication protocol or PAP. We could use options such as call in, which only authenticates the remote device on incoming calls. We haven't been told to do that. So I'm gonna enable PPP authentication PAP. We also need to send our username to router three and our password to router three so that router three can authenticate us. So show run interface serial two slash one. That's the configuration of router one. On router three, we're gonna do something similar. Username, router one, password, Cisco one. Interface serial two slash zero. The interface used on router three is serial two slash zero. Encapsulation PPP. PPP authentication PAP. Again, we're doing two-way authentication here. So we're going to enter the PPP authentication PAP command on both sides. And then we need to send our username, which is router three in this case, and our password, which is Cisco three, to router one. So show IP interface brief. As you can see, the interface has come up. And we can see that in the output here, interface is up, up. Router three should be able to ping router one. So IP address on serial two slash one on router one is 10.1.2.1. So ping 10.1.2.1, ping succeeds. So we've successfully configured PPP PAP between router one and router three. Now we're told to use debug commands to look at the PPP negotiation and then the authentication process. And we need to use show commands to prove that things are working properly. So on router one, debug PPP negotiation. This is gonna give a lot of output. So be careful with this command. On router three, I'm gonna shut the interface down, PPP negotiates only when the interface comes up. So you have to shut the interface down and then no shut it to see what's going on. And as you can see, a lot of output is displayed, but notice in the output LCP or link control protocol is used to negotiate options such as authentication, PPP multi-link and other options. You can see that the authentication protocol negotiated is PAP. There are various NCPs or network control protocols used in PPP. There's one called IPCP, which is the NCP for IP version four. There's an NCP for CDP called CDPCP. And there's also an NCP for IP version six. So welcome to a crazy number of acronyms and abbreviations here. So we've got an NCP for IP version four called IPCP. The state of those is closed and then things are negotiated. Notice authentication protocol is PAP. Scrolling down, we can see that authentication is taking place by both sides using the host name. Authentication is required for router one and router three, outbound, inbound authentication. Router one is authenticating the peer router, router three. Once authentication has taken place, the NCP negotiation takes place. So notice we have a negotiation of IP addresses. So we can see the two IP addresses on the link. We can see that the other device has an IP address of 10.1.2.2. So her address is 10.1.2.2 and our local address is 10.1.2.1. State is open and a route is installed to 10.1.2.2. 2. 
So in other words, we have a directly connected route, notice over here, to the remote neighbor. So the network is directly connected, but we also know about the IP address of the remote device. On router three, we see something similar, show IP route. Notice this router has a route to router one as a directly connected route in the routing table. That's the IP address of router one. So we see the slash 24 network as well as the slash 32 network to the host on the other side of the link. This is the local IP address on router three. IP address on router one. Different passwords were used, but that's supported with PAP. The negotiation shows us that the link has come up. So let's use debug PPP authentication so that we only view the authentication and not all the other negotiation. So on this interface, I'll shut it down and then no shut it to renegotiate PPP. We are told that authorization is required. We're using the host name and password from the interface for PAP authentication. We configured that information directly on the interface. So authentication is required. There's two-way authentication taking place here. The local router authenticates router three. Authentication successfully passes in both directions. So the NCP for CDP and NCP for IP can be negotiated. And if we look on the link, we can see that the encapsulation used is PPP. Link control protocol has been successfully negotiated. Network control protocols for IP version four and CDP have successfully been negotiated. So as an example, just so that you can see this, I'm gonna configure an IP version six address on this interface of 2001 to colon colon one slash 64. And on this side, IPv6 address 2001 colon two colon colon two slash 64. Notice what happens. We've got an IPv6 CP negotiation taking place. So now show interface serial two slash one. Notice we have the NCP for IP version four, NCP for CDP, NCP for IP version six successfully negotiated. Show IP route shows us the slash 32 network for the neighbor in the routing table. Show IPv6 route shows us the local IP address and the subnet. So we should be able to ping the remote router using IP version four, and we should be able to ping the remote router using IP version six, which we can. So let's do a debug PPP authentication on this side. Shut the link down, and then I'll no shut it again. So we see the negotiation on both sides. So on this side, we see something very similar. The link is being treated as a dedicated line. In the old days, we used to use ISDN or analog modems. So the calls were set up when needed and torn down when not in use. Here, however, we've got a dedicated serial link. So that is shown here by the router whose interface I know shut. Authorization is required. We're using the hostname and password from the interface for PAP authentication. Authentication is required in both directions. Authentication takes place successfully. NCPs are negotiated, so IP version four, IP version six as an example. Here's CDP. Once everything is successfully negotiated, the interface comes up and this router should be able to ping router one, which it can. So we've successfully configured and verified PPP PAP between router one and router three. So the next task is to enable CHAP authentication between router one and router four.